teacher. <laughs> Magic up in here. This was called the firecracker. Ah, oh my gosh, I've got all the glitter. Anyway, happy new year, everyone. It's 2021. And as you can tell by the title of my video, I quit teaching. I will not continue teaching in 2021. Not as of this moment. I'm pretty sure that it's not. But anyway, let's get to what I was doing, how I was feeling, why I ended up making this decision, and my resolution and my hope for the future. As you might know, if you know a teacher or if you are a teacher and you've just landed upon my video, we have many hats and we do many things and it goes with the trade. And I think that a lot of us feel that we can definitely multitask and handle all of the things. And I'm still one of those people who thinks that I can do all of those things. It just got to a point for me where I, I wasn't enjoying my life anymore. And I wanted to be everything that I could be for everyone else, which goes with wearing all of the hats and being the best person I can be for the students. And there comes a point where if my cup is running empty, there's nothing, nothing to give others, nothing to give those kids, nothing to give me. And that's basically what happened. If you hear some booms outside, it's not thunder, it's the fireworks from the new year, still celebrating in my dress at like one o'clock in the morning. And I'm doing take two, by the way, because I accidentally didn't record the other one, but that's okay. It's 2021. No one's gonna stop us. <laughs> so here's all the things that we were doing in the school on top of all the things that we normally do. And if you aren't familiar with all of the hats that teachers do, you are gonna get a little glimpse here just in a moment. So I even wrote this down. So we were teaching in person per usual, but also virtual. There was a time where I had four kids in front of me and then I had my iPad here and my computer over there plugged in and then my Promethean board, which is just a big TV that's touch screen behind me. And um, I felt like a bobblehead. I was like looking at the kids and looking down here and I was making sure the audio sounded okay because sometimes it would screech and all the kids would freak out and then I would go over there and I'm trying to fix it, running around, got in all of my exercise, but felt like a bobblehead. And thank goodness I had wonderful, like sweet four students they were in my classroom because they were following the directions, the COVID regulation directions and keeping safe. It was when my class size started to grow beyond especially what the CDC was saying was okay in the classroom. Um, it got up to like 17 kids when we were first told that it'd be 11 and the plexiglass and the mask. Oh boy, don't get me started. Seven and eight year olds, even younger, my goodness. They amazed me though with how well they adapted and followed the rules. They did so well, but still they're kids and they forget and 17 kids in a classroom and telling them that they can't get up for seven hours. Could you imagine an adult doing that? Seven hours? Mm -mm. They had to do everything in that room other than go to special area where there was no plexiglass or recess, but they could stay six feet apart outside for recess. It went as well as what you're probably thinking in your head. So there was just a lot of stuff where we as teachers were being asked to do things that were either clear, but there was no way that we could make that happen 100%. Things that were unclear, especially when the expectations were a little slack. Um, it was just very confusing and very overwhelming to be a teacher through the pandemic. and. Um, Here's some more things. So within the first couple of weeks of school, in a normal year, the teacher has a schedule, lays it out for the kids, you get into your norms, your expectations, and all of that good stuff so that they know what to expect and the teacher knows what to expect of them and everyone gets into this little routine. I guess routine. They get into their groove with one another. Well, by the time we got to third week, fourth week, we realized that this whole virtual, may have been even just two weeks, this whole virtual in-person thing was not working with our first plan. So on top of that, the district telling us that more kids would be coming in sooner than we 
expected and we had to get the kids in for testing even though they were virtual but we had to schedule and somehow find a place for them that was safe anyway changed our schedule around five times within three or four months and again again i applaud the kids for how flexible they were because we had no option and no choice but to continue to try to adapt to virtual and keeping virtual way and out of the way of the in-person so the in-person the virtual had more of our attention it just we didn't feel like i didn't feel like i was being as effective as i would have been wanting to be and when you have these expectations that are above you telling you that you still have to show this data but yet it's okay if it doesn't show this but yet Ooh, I see so and so and so and so is below benchmark and like having all these meetings about like what can you do what can you do what can we change what can the team change what can we always do better which is a part of like you all know I love that mentality I live that mentality it actually can sometimes be a curse in a way when I'm not present and settled and where I'm just at and being like comfortable in just where I am today. So in this case, continue to push and push and push and push when we were exhausted, when I was exhausted. And there was nothing more to give is when I broke, when I realized that I broke. It was unexpected and surprising then, but I'm not surprised now. Um, I'll get into the feelings then, like what was going on internally. I would describe myself as the teacher that, as many teachers would call themselves, as someone who likes to go above and beyond for their students. I commonly was called the overachiever and that I just needed to calm down and relax. I was just doing the very best that I could. And I wanted to do my 110% best for the kids, which meant building relationships with them, ones that would last a lifetime with one another, those skills that they won't forget, how to interact with other people, even older people in a respectful manner, along with the skills that they were learning. I love to see them smile. I don't know how to not do all that I know that I can for people, for kids too. It's hard for me to know where to draw the line and be like, nope, this is enough. Because I know that I could bring so much more into their life if I just apply more of the knowledge that I know to make something right here, like the best possible scenario. And it's really hard. And I know that's something that I'm growing in knowing where I've got to take care of me but I also know that it's not just me, that there's so many other teachers that were at my school that were wait, are wigged out, that there's just so much. And um, yeah, I got to the point where I realized that there was no time for other people in my life getting home. There's just nothing else. By the time I was relaxing and just recuperating, I didn't have any energy for the relationships that matter so much to me. In my personal life. I also didn't have any time for my hobbies to release any personal creativity like YouTube. That's where I've been. Basically trying to take in as much time as possible, the limited amount of time that I've had to replenish and refresh myself. I remember trying to make a video on how I was managing my stress with COVID and the pandemic and all that for school and it was just I didn't even get to finish editing that video. I should release that at some point. Just some extra craziness is the millions of dollars, not even kidding, millions of dollars, like $8 million that our district spent on the plexiglass, which I know was absolutely necessary for us to open the schools. But that also meant that all of our salaries as teachers were frozen. And while so many people out there and I feel like I've got to like say this or like, oh, but like, why are you upset that you're not getting paid more? Aren't you there for the kids? Isn't your heart in it? Absolutely. Just like people who make 
YouTube videos or they put their creativity out for other people, that is still, that still takes time. Our lives are not free. And for us to do the things that we enjoy, we have to have income that comes back into it to support all the things that are like over here that are nagging us like student loans and groceries and bills so that we can continue to do all of the creative things that we love to do. There was even a time where the district was bringing around GoPro candle, bringing around GoPro cameras and they were recording the teachers live so that they could show parents that the rigor in the classrooms were still as wonderful as what they have been in the past before the pandemic. And while my lesson, I would say, was bomb, <laughs> we were doing a science experiment with Alka-Seltzer tablets and water and looking at the changes and like the solids and liquids and all that good stuff. Um, I had just finished the experiment. It was like a pop-in visit. And my principal, love him, came in and was like, oh my gosh, like they're coming down the hallway. I was like, oh my gosh, I just finished. He's like, do it again. And I turned and looked, I was like, okay, kids, like rehearsal. That's what that was. We're going to do that all over again. Okay. And I'm going to ask you the same questions, but pretend like you've never done this before. And of course you've always got one, if not two, maybe three that weren't listening to those instructions. So it came time for us to do it again and they're going around with their camera and they've got it following me and then zooming in on the kids and what they're doing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like what change did you see? What happened to our tablet? And one kid raised his hand and I was like, yes, so-and-so. And he said, it dissolved. I'm like, oh my gosh, great job using that vocabulary word off of that word web over there. And I was just so excited that I was like, oh, we're doing great here. And one kid calls out and goes, we already answered that question. Why are we doing this again, Mrs. Crawford? This feels silly. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> ah, but that's kids for you. Very honest. You can trust them. Almost trust all of them with anything. But when it comes to just honesty and what they're thinking, they'll just put it out there. So that's what was going on. So laughing now, but stressful then. Just again, the cake analogy, layer upon layer of all the things on top of one another. Just me cake toppled over. Whew. So I'm smiling now, but let me tell you how I was feeling. I was feeling, and I'm still building out of this hole that feels like the deepest hole I've ever been in in my life, which sounds crazy to myself to hear me say that because I've always, and I still do have all these positive mantras in my head but they've never not worked. I got to the point where I didn't even recognize myself and I didn't feel like myself. I felt overworked, stressed, angry, so angry, worthless, frustrated, sad, depressed, anxious, lifeless, zombie-like, alone, confused, numb, Guilty, ashamed, and exhausted, my goodness. There was times, of course, where I could smile and laugh with, laugh with the kids. But I found it increasingly hard to be me with the kids. To have my heart there with the kids. To be the best version of myself and my teacher self for the students. When that started to creep in, I started to feel that guilt and shame because I realized that if I wasn't a full cup, there was nothing for me to give to them. And it only made me feel worse. The more that I was trying to push and overcome and mind over matter, even though I'd come home and I'd use the time that I had, that little bit of time when I'd come home to take the longest hot showers and light the lavender candles, the face masks, making sure I still had my hair and my makeup done for school in the morning. On the outside, I don't think anyone knew I was suffering. 
Yeah. Because I was trying to also fool myself that I could continue going on for six more months. The moment I knew that I had to quit was in a very unlikely place. It was at Walt Disney World, which is where I get those Mickey ears. And I've been there two or three times now. And when I couldn't even enjoy the moments there at Disney, the rides, being with the people that I was with, having those thoughts of school and what was going on and what I had to return to and feeling this weight on my ankles, rather probably on my neck. I knew that this is not the way life was to be lived. While my heart and whatever I want to do in my life for my job always has to be involved, I know that if it ever gets to the point where I felt feel like that, like I was feeling then, I'm not enjoying it anymore. And that's okay. And maybe I'll enjoy it again in the future. But the circumstances that are outside just the art of teaching got to be way too much. And I was burnt. I'm still burnt. I felt alone because I wasn't talking about it. Which is why I wanted to record myself and make this video for all of you. Anyone who's watching. If you're currently a teacher thinking about quitting, you can do it. I know it's scary. I know it's confusing. I know that shame and guilt is a feeling that you're facing, but there's no shame in taking care of yourself. There's no guilt to be had when we know, just like how we tell our kids, that they have to take care of themselves. Social emotional stuff, right? You have to self-regulate and know what's best for them and read their body so that they can be their best selves and put their best feet forward. That's why I felt like a zombie. It felt numb and lifeless because I was going through the motions anymore. And that's not how any teacher wants to be. We want to feel full of life, excited, passionate, all of those things. I'm thinking of the last day when they were crying and I was crying and we were hugging a lot. Even though they believe that I was the right person for them. I know that I have faith of the next person who is fresh and new and full of life will be able to add to their lives even more to add upon what I've already put into the students. So I have faith in that. And I have a lot of hope in that. You all know why I was overworked and stressed worthless definitely because the district continued to change things at the last moment and be like surprise teachers new thing like change up your whole schedule change everything around you can't do this oh now one of you can do just virtual what wait now actually we're gonna have someone outside the district do that but wait now we ran out of money and like just felt like we were thrown around the ring and if they said jump we had to jump made me feel like we didn't have value. We weren't even asked about our opinions based on the pandemic and the teaching situation and like the kids being in person. It was just, do you want to come back and have a job? Yes or no. If you say no, you don't have a job. It really made me feel like just devalued, devalued. And you try to like not think about those things and overcome them and be like, you know, no, I have value and I have worth to these kids. And while that is true, when I was worn down to the point where I wasn't even my healthy self anymore, I knew that I wasn't 100% the best teacher for the kids anymore. And I, I couldn't live with that. I couldn't live with that. I was questioning myself. I was telling myself I could push through it. I questioned my purpose in life. And, you know, that's still a question mark, like, What's the next adventure? What's the next chapter? And it's scary, but I'm really surprised at how excited, like how excited I am. Writing a resignation letter at first and surprising, shocking my principal the day after Thanksgiving break at seven o'clock in the morning on a Monday. 
um, did not feel good. It was really scary, really scary. But his support and his kindness, as well as my vice principal and my family and friends and the other teachers, the support from all of them was, it just blindsided me so much because I had felt so alone because I kept it all in. But the moment I had let it out, everyone was understanding. It actually made it harder because they told me how much and why they were going to miss me. And all of a sudden I felt that my worth, my confidence and my happiness, um, my hope being restored. And so leading up to my last day, it felt super surreal until I was leaving school and driving away, which I will insert the video here of that. And you can watch that if you'd like, or if I just might have it play here. Um, I was really caught off guard how I was feeling. But I can still say I am very excited about the future and where it's going to lead me next. I know right now doing this video is really just feels good. It feels right. And I will always find somewhere to teach or where to help people. So this is my outlet right now. I will say that I was trying to push for six more months to the end of my contract for this year. Um, but my mind and body was just not, not willing to do that. And I feel empowered to have made that decision for myself. I think I was looking for other people for the longest time, maybe even two years to tell me when it was my time to pull out a teaching. But that's just a decision that is too much for anyone else to decide for your life, for my life. And I understood it then, but I guess I was looking for affirmation. It wasn't until I was pushed to my breaking point that I made the decision and everyone just was really proud. Like their words were that they were proud of me and I just was emotional and their prayers and their phone calls and their quotes of encouragement. It was just, it was just so, so, so sweet. It was so sweet. Speechless. So the final result, right? I quit. I quit my job. I quit teaching. And um, a little side note, being at Disney, I continually had a phone call, phone calls from a family asking questions about report cards while on Thanksgiving break. And I remember something just switching and clicking in my head going, no, no more. I'm not responding. And um, normal me would have, but also switching, clicking, going, Oh my word, my work has totally taken over my personal life and my relationships and my time for me to explore all of the different things that I enjoy. Yeah, that's when it clicked for me. I realized that I'm no good to anyone if I'm not good to myself. I knew I was especially like the more that I was, it clicked and switched. I really knew after the fact that once I was telling everyone for the rest of that week that um, I was going to quit, that I was really thinking about it. Um, I knew I wanted accountability at that point when I was reaching out to people um, about my decision and reaching out to a friend to check my resignation letter, which then turned into a leave of absence letter, by the way. 
um, principal had me do that instead so that there's still what I'm calling a safety net to catch me in the new year if I'd like to go back. Um, but honestly, when I started telling my family and my parents and my brother and my church friends and my teacher friends, I knew that I couldn't turn back because what that would have made me feel even worse when I knew that I was ready. I was ready to share what was going on and say, I need a break. I need to leave this forever. I, ju I just, I can't do this any longer. And I practiced my little speech from my principal over and over and over. If y'all know me personally, you're not surprised. Um, I just wanted to make sure that it sounded professional and not overly emotional. You know, my principal... He's super duper smart. He knew it was coming before I even said like the third word. And he said, Mrs. Crawford, are you leaving the profession? And I was like, oh my gosh. Um, I told him it was not easy. I told him it was very hard to make that decision. But he, he understood. It was hard for him and my vice principal. We cried together in my classroom. Again, just beautiful. So weird how... It can be bittersweet. These memories can be bittersweet. I'm thinking about inside up <laughs> when you've got like your little memory that's happy and sad at the same time, but it's like a core memory and it was so special. All of those moments with my vice principal, my principal, and lots of other people are like core memories for me. They were changing for me in my life, in my heart, my mind, my body, my soul, all of it. I realized this is exactly what I needed, what I needed to do that I am on the right track, that there are blessings in store, that God's looking out for me, even though I swear it's hard for me to even like, sometimes even believe now because I was so angry that I felt that he wasn't there, that God wasn't there. He wasn't looking out for me, which I knew in the back of my mind, I know it's not true. But when, when I felt so low, man, it's really easy to believe to the pit in your stomach that you're alone. That there's no one who knows what you're going through. And that's not true. That's not true. And that's why I really wanted to make this video. I really want to make this video for anyone else. And it was videos like this that inspired me that in a safe place I could reflect. And I have here make decisions and connect to other people before I was ready to make that decision public with the relationships in my personal life. I just needed somewhere to be able to feel like my feelings were being released somewhere. So I hope that some of you like me landed on someone else's page and now you've landed on my channel and you're watching this video so that you know that you're not alone and that you can definitely write in the comments below what you're going through because I know, oh gosh, I know a lot of what those feelings are and um, situations most likely, of course, definitely different, but you know, there's this common thread in teachers that we just feel like a troop and we feel like we're just in it together and we support each other and we rally together and we also can have our lows together. And I know that in front of the students were like actresses and actors going like, everything's great. Everything's fine. Good morning. When you're actually like dying inside. Um, safe place. You need to talk to someone who's outside of your personal relationships. Please let me help you feel like you're not alone. I think that ate up me in the inside the most. I learned that no one was going to tell me when the right time to quit was. And I'm going to carry that with me, that I have to make decisions in my life. And that's why I feel empowered afterwards. I don't want to burden or put that pressure on others because that just makes me feel icky inside. But also when I'm able to make that decision for me, and it's okay to seek counsel through other people and all those things, but waiting for someone to say, yeah, you should do it. And like getting enough yeses, I can't do that. Like, that would have taken away, just like if my students in the classroom were like, Mrs. Crawford, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? If I always told them what to do, they learn self-helplessness. 
And in the same retrospect, I don't want that for me. And I want to be more empowered in my decisions. And I feel really empowered in the decision that I made, that I decided now was the time to quit. Now at the end of May, in the beginning of June, not the end of my contract, but now. And um, even though it was hard, that was the right decision. I also learned that comparing to other teachers is not healthy and that I can only push myself so hard. And I wasn't willing, I wasn't willing personally to sacrifice the quality of the teaching that I was giving to the students, even though the pandemic, sure. But I still wanted to do my best and I wasn't willing to sacrifice. And so while that decision ended with me not being their teacher anymore, it wasn't on purpose. That's just me as my person and who I wanna be for other people. Comparing yourself to anyone else, of course, is never a healthy thing. And it's so easy to do, especially when we are inspired by other people and we're like, oh, like I want to be like that person. So like, what can I do to every day do better and better? That while at first can be healthy, can turn into like this obsession and then start to turn into criticizing ourselves. And while I felt alone and not telling anyone and like seeing like the actors and actresses that we are going, oh, like everything is fine. Everything's great. Good morning, so-and-so. I was like, oh my gosh, like I was just trying to read them being like, how come they aren't looking at me? Why do they look so peppy and so happy? And then they were like, oh my gosh, you look the same way. It was just, after I was open, they thought the same thing of me, but also I can't, again, waver my decision based on if other people are affirming that it is the right decision. I just have to make the decision. And if it's the decision that I make for my life, it is the right one. I'm the one who has to live it. No one else walks in my shoes every single day. They can't make the decision for me. The feelings that I bear and the things that are going on, that's as a result of what I decide that I put into my life. It feels scary as I touched on, but oh, so exciting. Like a hundred times more exciting than scary at this point. Scary to, at first, like to say I quit. But soon after that, relieved. Oh, so relieved and just hopeful, full of hope now, where I didn't feel hope before. So y'all know you can't always please everyone. So if there is someone in your life that's like, oh my gosh, like why'd you make that decision? Not to come across harshly, but oh well. Oh well, because as I already said, it's your life. Even if people don't understand, you're the only one who really needs to understand. No one else is walking in your shoes each and every day. It's your decision. It's your life. And there's a hundred thousand other things in the world that we could be doing. And a transition job is okay. I'm telling myself that. I don't have to know exactly what's next and what's right just yet. I don't want to rush into the next thing. I want to just be present and refuel and reflect and refresh. And that's starting right here with all of you in 2021 doing this video. I'm so cheesy. I'm, I was a second grade teacher after all. <laughs> I also learned that while a job can bring happiness, how we spend our time with others and for ourselves is more important. Personally, that's what I have learned from this. What sparks your joy? What sparks mine? If it's our job, that's great. Like doing this, this sparks my joy. So it's okay to find joy, of course, in our job. Like that's the goal, right? If we can have joy in what we do and make money, absolutely. But when it gets to the point where the job is just suffocating us and we don't feel joy in life anymore, it is time for a change. It is time for a change. Also, getting to the end here. I know that teaching can be applied in a multitude of ways, not just in the traditional sense. So however I can teach and help others, I'll find an outlet somewhere. And I also learned that I'm not gonna put my value and my worth and how much I output in my job and just be at peace and present and step back when necessary. So yeah, <laughs> there, that is pretty much all of it. Any questions that you have personally or any situations that you're going through in your life, don't feel afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Don't feel alone. I can't believe I'm smiling making this video because my goodness, there have been so many tears leading up to this. I'm just going to go ahead and end it before I wrap myself back in it. 
but I'm excited to start this new year fresh and new. And I just had my birthday and I'm 26. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm excited to see where the future takes me and where the future takes all of you. So happy new years. Sing the best, we're from all the way.